Okay, so we computed a t-statistic before. Uh, that's when you're wanting to compare two groups of people or where you have one variable that is uh, binary or dichotomous. That is, it can take on one of two values and you're sort of testing that against some continuous variable to see if one category is greater or less than another category. So what happens when you have more than two groups? Say you have three or more groups. That's when you have to start using a, a, a test called analysis of variance. It's also called ANOVA for short. And instead of computing a T statistic, we're going to compute an F statistic. And what that F statistic will help us do is determine the probability level, a p-value, um, but it's going to help uh, give us confidence that at least one of the categories ha is greater or lesser than the other categories. So again, it's when you have one categorical variable and one continuous variable and you're wanting to see whether levels across the cat levels of the continuous variable uh, vary uh, uh, depending on the categorical variable. So again, that's three or more levels for that categorical variable. So the first step is to compute the sum of squares total. So we're going to compute several things. I in the end, we're going to get an F statistic. Uh, and there are several steps here. And what I want to do really is just kind of give you some intuitions about what's going on behind the scenes when you're doing an analysis of variance. Most software will do this automatically for you, but if you have some intuitions about what's going on behind the scenes, that should help you uh, interpret those results uh, and make better decisions. So the first step is to compute averages for each group, just like we did in the t-test. So let's compute average for the first group. 35.1, and we should be able to just drag this across and get averages for each group, yes. And then the next step is to compute the grand mean, and that will be the average. So the next step is to compute the grand mean, and that will be the average of all values in the data set. And so we're in this step one here, compute sum of squares total. And to get the sum of squares total, we need to compute some deviations, just like with the t-test. Uh, but here, we're going to compute a deviation, the deviation from the grand mean. So that would be this value minus this value. And we will make that into a constant, so that way we can drag it across. So let's see here, we have 10 values down to row 11. Bring that across. So there's every value's deviation from the grand mean. And what we're doing here is we're trying to uh, parse, or we're trying to uh, rather partition variation. We want to see where, uh, we want to be able to partition variation within the groups and we want to be able to partition variation between the groups uh, in the end. So this is sort of the first step is to compute how much variation there is overall. And that's represented in the sum of squares total. So deviation squared, as you might remember from the t-test, we're just going to take this value and we'll put a caret 2. And that will square that value. And we drag that around. Now we have each value, each deviation squared, and then the sum of squares total, we simply add up all those values, and we have a value of 19,652, excuse me, for the sum of squares total. I want to make a quick note here, when you're doing all these computations like this in Microsoft Excel, not using the built-in analysis of variance features in Excel. We have all sorts of rounding. So it's rounding these values here. and Or it's rounding these values here. It's rounding these values here. Um, and then finally rounding these va values here. So we're having 
we're introducing small amounts of error into the model just because the software is rounding the numbers. Um, we don't need to worry about that for the sake of this educational exercise, just to show you, uh, but I did want to note that the values you get from real statistics software might be slightly different from those that you do sort of by hand in Excel because Excel introduces the rounding error. Okay, so we've parsed the sum of square, or excuse me, we've partitioned the sum of squares total. The next step is to get the sum of squares within. And it's a similar computation as we did for the sum of squares total, but instead of computing each value's deviation from the grand mean, we uh, we compute each value's deviation from its own conditions mean. So for group A, that will be this value minus the mean for group A. And we can make that row a constant so that we can drag this around. And so we can drag this over here. Whoops. See if we can get this. Okay, so that should be, we've got too many rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so these, we can clear this out. Make sure that's correct. Indeed. You can click here and you can see it's the last value. Again, we square each of these values, so equal sign caret 2, and we should be able to just drag this around. Oops. And then to get the sum of squares within, similar to the procedure for the sum of squares total, we just add all these values up. All right, and then to get the sum of squares between, we take the sum of squares total, and from it, we subtract the sum of squares within. And we get this value, 6,619. Now, to compute the F, we'll need a couple of these values. Let's go over here to the left of the screen. Degrees of freedom for a one-way analysis of variance is a little bit different from the t-test and the chi-square. With one-way analysis of variance, you're going to end up with two values for degrees of freedom, a degrees of freedom between and a degrees of freedom within. So the degrees of freedom between is k minus 1, that is the number of conditions you have minus 1. We have three conditions, so our degrees of freedom in this case is 2. I'll put a 2 here. And then degrees of freedom with n is n minus k. And n is going to be the total number of observations you have in your uh, data. We have 30 separate observations, that's 10 in each group. And we have three conditions, so 30 minus 3 is 27. So I'll put a 27 here. And so the mean square between, we need to compute the mean square between and the mean square between is going to be equal to the sum of squares between over the degrees of freedom between. And the mean square within is going to be equal to the sum of squares within whoops, over the degrees of freedom within. And then lastly, f, that's the final statistic we want to have uh, in order to give us some information about probability, will be equal to the mean square between over the mean square within. And we get an ultimate f value of 6.85. Now, as I've been teaching you the t-test and the chi-square, I've avoided talking to you about the so-called logic of null hypothesis significance testing. I wanted to spare you some of that um, algorithmic style of thinking that a lot of people go through when they're doing this type of analysis. Uh, but the way you look up your critical f value, 
uh, and compare that to your observed F value really requires that I mention something about that now. So uh, when you go to an F table, you'll see the top row is your degrees of freedom within and your left column is your degrees of freedom uh, between. So excuse me, the degrees of freedom between is going to be your top row and your degrees of freedom within will be this column here on the left. And so that standard is to have a 0 0.05 probability level as your threshold. You want to be below that to, uh, to have some confidence that there is some sort of difference. Uh, and so we would go down to degrees of freedom 27 on the left column and go over to degrees of freedom 2 and it says 3.35 we know that we're going to need an F value of above 3.35 in order to conclude that uh, we can reject this idea that there isn't any difference between the three groups. So we know an, a value of 6.85 is well above that value we just looked up in the table. And so we can conclude here that uh, we can be confident that the difference we saw was probably not due to chance alone.